a mix of enterprise and cunning, brutality and pomp, had turned India into the biggest, richest and most significant colony in the empire. By the closing years of Victoria's reign, India formed the heart of an empire that stretched from Canada in the west to Australia in the east. It was time to celebrate. Victoria's Diamond Jubilee on the 22nd of June 1897 was the grandest showing off of empire Britain would ever see. If the Indian Durbars were designed to cow the empire's subjects, the Jubilee was a piece of theatre meant to fire the British public with imperial fervour. A vast cavalcade made its way across the capital to the so-called Parish Church of Empire, St Paul's Cathedral. Thousands of troops had been summoned from all over the empire. Canadian hussars, Indian lancers, Cypriot policemen wearing fezes, Jamaicans in white gaiters. There were Hong Kong policemen, Australian cavalrymen, Dayaks, Maoris, Rajas and Maharajas. In the midst of all this frenzy rode the matriarch of empire. She allowed herself an occasional tear. The day was marked by celebrations throughout her colonies. The Daily Mail brought out a special edition in gold ink to mark the occasion. As the procession passed, its star reporter was quite overcome. You begin to understand, as never before, what the empire amounts to. Not only that we possess all these remote, outlandish places, but that we send out a boy and he takes hold of savages and teaches them to obey him and to believe in him and to die for him and the Queen.